So let's have a little bit of fun in your spare time with everything else you had to do. You've just finished writing a book, Expect mm -hmm. to Win, um, which I had a chance to leaf through in preparation for this. Oh, wow. And you, um, you provide some advice to mm -hmm. people in the workforce, not necessarily women, not necessarily diverse people in the workforce, just people in the workforce. What are, mm. I mean, pull out a few of your favorite nuggets, if you will, oh, um, for our audience. One of my favorite topics, so thank you, David. Okay. And you're right, the book is industry agnostic, it is sexually agnostic, and it is seniority agnostic. Right. I wish I had had that at 24 years old when right. I started on Wall Street, but I still use those pearls today. Um, and I'll tell you, my favorite ones are number chapter four, perception is the co-pilot to reality. How people perceive you will directly impact how they deal with you. So yes, your success equation has something to do with how smart you are. It has something to do with how hard you work, but a very big component of your success equation, particularly in corporate environments, but frankly in any environment, has to do with the perception that the marketplace has about you and in that chapter I talk about the fact that you can in fact train people to think about you in the way that you want them to think about you but your success depends upon your understanding of what adjectives are associated with success for the specific seat that you are sitting in or the seat that you aspire to sit in. And that's the pearl that I think is the most important because most people walk into their jobs thinking, I'm just gonna work hard, I'm really smart, and I'll be able to be successful. But if you're working in a way that's inconsistent with the way they're thinking about success, you will never maximize your success in that role. The second pearl that I think that's very important is that you can't do it alone. No matter how smart you are or how hard you work, you will need relationships. And the three that I write about in chapter five is the advisor relationship, the mentor relationship, and the sponsor relationship. And of the three, the most important is the sponsor. And the sponsor is not the person you tell the good, the bad, and the ugly to. It's the person that you tell the good, the good, and the good, but most importantly, it's the person that's carrying your paper into the room. It's the person that behind closed doors will argue passionately on your behalf as to why you should get the promotion, why you should get the great bonus, why you should get the next opportunity. And the third one that I talk about all the time is authenticity. You are your own competitive advantage. Nobody can be you the way that you can be you. So the last thing that you should ever do is to submerge that which is uniquely you if you want to maximize your success in any environment. I wonder if you'd talk a little bit about the importance of the importance the media plays in sending signals and setting the tone for diversity in America. Oh, no question the media has a huge role. It, it sends an implicit message and an explicit message about who you are. It gives you information and it creates perceptions. Um, and I, I gotta tell you, from as long as I could remember, as I was thinking about uh, having this conversation with you, I thought about some of the images that I was exposed to when I was a young girl. And I'm, I'm obviously gonna date myself here, David, so here we go. But one of the people that I couldn't wait every week to see was Peggy on Mannix. You know, Gail Fisher, in my mind, was just the epitome of professionalism. And then, obviously, Diane Carroll with Julia and even Clarence Williams III with Mod Squad because in my mind these were all smart go get them kind of folks who were respected for who they were. I, it didn't even occur to me that it was a big deal necessarily that they were black but the way Mannix treated Peggy, trusted advisor, respected her. You know, same thing with the way, you know, Link was treated on the mod squad, equal to Peggy and the rest, right? And so, no question, it created uh, a thought in my mind that when someone said you can be anything that you want to be, I could, you know, attribute it to what I saw on TV. Absolutely, I can do that. Never occurred to me that I... I couldn't. And when I think about uh, what NBC did with bringing, you know, Bill's, Bill Cosby uh, to the forefront, you know, obviously that created a picture in people's minds about what a black physician and a black lawyer would do and how they had the same values that everybody else had with respect to their kids doing well and getting well educated. So I do think the media is probably the most significant influence, particularly today. You could argue that it was Perry Pesu with the family structure, but now given what's happened to the family structure broadly, so many young people get their, uh, get their images of who they are and what they can do from the media. So thank you very much, Carla. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning in to Media Insider for this conversation with Carla Harris. Have a good day.